This is one of the most forgiving drivers on the planet. But what exactly does that mean for the average golfer? Does it mean it's longer? Is it straighter? Is the sweet spot bigger? What does forgiving actually mean? Because I think we're all getting a little confused. The reference to 10K is the holy grail number in the eternal quest for forgiveness. Sorry, can't use the word quest, that's a tailor-made phrase now. The MOI in the new Ping G430 Max 10K is off the charts. Well, it isn't exactly off the charts, because we know it's 10K. So as a golfer, all I wanna know is, is it gonna make me a better player when whacking a golf ball off the tee? And by better, I mean longer and straighter than my playing partner with his ancient Ping G430 Max. So I'll be testing both in today's video to find out what am I paying that extra money for? Well, as I see it, the tech within these two heads is almost identical, except for the carbon fly wrap crown, which can be found in the G430 Max 10K and was only previously seen in the G430 LST model from the original release. That crown reduces weight, which is relocated for a lower CG. The weight in the rear position was 25 grams in the Max and is now 28 grams in the 10K. But here is the First question, why is it not a movable weight in the Max 10K? Is that not a possible negative before we start? There is also a change in shape. It is flatter and a larger visible footprint, but it still falls into the 460cc category. Now that price difference is 549 for the new model against 469 for the existing. Is it worth extra? And can we confirm if 10K MOI is noticeably better performance? Now, just to clarify what MOI means, the higher the MOI, the greater resistance to twisting or reduced torque, but should that really be interpreted as forgiveness? And we should remember, the G430 Max is a driver that already produces extremely high MOI. So is the gain that great? I'm gonna show you what happened out on the golf course and also what happened in terms of dry ball distance when comparing the two. There's one thing we cannot discuss, and that is the design of the head cover. I'm not talking about visually, I'm talking about how it fits on this 10K head driver. It's slightly bigger than the original lineup, but they've clearly got exactly the same head cover, and I can't recall how it fitted on originally, but that is ill-fitting to say the least, and it's a poor effort, and I think ping at 550 quid, you really do need to up your game in terms of that head cover market. And before we go any further, it's worth noting for those of you who haven't watched this channel before, I'm a nine handicap golfer. I hit very much uh, inconsistent off of the tee and I will test out the theory of 10K in terms of forgiveness and what it actually means in reality out here on the golf course. Okay, so the first six shots hit out on the golf course was pretty much straight out of the car park, no warm up. Exactly how I'd start my round of golf and uh, did I notice anything hugely different between the two? The answer in all honesty would be no. It's so hard to gauge what this forgiveness actually means. And if you take a closer look to the variables in my swing, what you'll see across the six is none of them are fantastic, I would guess. And there's probably variables in each of them. And I think they play a huge part in the end result. And I'm not sure how much forgiveness can really eradicate the problems with my swing. That said, all the balls were relatively straight. My swing curvature is left to right. Didn't do a great deal to straighten that out. And they all ended up in a very similar position in terms of downrange. Now, before we go any further, I'm gonna change the head out of this uh, 430 into the uh, 10K model. The one notable difference, don't forget, I've already touched on it, is there is a movable weight in the 430 Max, the original, and a fixed weight in the 10K. And I just wonder how many of you think that is a possible negative. And I'm a little bit surprised in many ways because from a custom fit perspective, it reduces a few of the possibilities. And I'm surprised that we're paying more for a driver with less adjustability, which isn't quite the norm. So I'm a bit surprised, the fact is, are you? Today's video is sponsored by our friends at Hot Golf, the online golf retailer for all major brands. And if you want new golf gear, then please support us by supporting them. I mean, to be honest with you, that is straight out with the old driver, as good as I can hit a golf ball. And uh, it's very difficult to see how we would get better results than that, but we'll move on to shot number two. Oh, 
Well, that again, absolutely bullet straight. Three on the bounce is a bit of a shock for me, just as to how good they are. It's as good as I can hit the ball as a first one back into the 10K version. And uh, I find it really difficult to separate these two in terms of performance. I really, really do. Right, one more with the 10K. Well, do you know what? I think that's me done. I don't need to learn any more out here on the golf course. And I think in many ways, you know, I think Ping could be a victim of their own success because let's not forget the strongest point in Ping's lineup is just how forgiving it has always been. So to try and emphasize that point, I think is not a huge leap forward. And that's not because the 10K isn't a very good driver. It's just that they're already in a very, very strong position in that stakes as it stands. Right, that is out there on the golf course finished. And the next thing you're going to do is see me collect dry ball data and also one really interesting reveal about the fact that Ping have already achieved near on 10K in that MOI number in a previous model that might surprise you. But let's start off with the indoor hitting, which was up at Hollywell Golf Club on Lewis's new simulator software. I'm playing at their manor and hit a number of balls with both drivers. Now, to be quite honest with you, we could run this for quite some time, but essentially what you will see is the only difference between performance, whether I hit a fairway or not, is based on my swing and not on the capabilities of each driver. So I learned nothing there. However, we did of course carry and capture dry ball data. That dry ball data is up in front of you now, and the one glaring thing to note is that at first glance, the G430 Max driver, the older driver of the two, perform better if you look at carry distance. However, what you also need to note is club head speed, and it is very much relative. In other words, I swung a little bit faster with the 430 Max than I did with the 10K model, and therefore produced a little bit longer results in terms of that carry distance. There is, however, a few other noticeable things of note. The spin number on both was very, very good. However, one is a 10 and a half degree model notched down a degree or two. The other is a nine degree head. And whilst it was suggested to me that the nine degree head on the new Max version will launch the ball very, very high because of that 28 gram weight and where the CG is placed, I actually found that still for me, the Max model, the older version I keep having to refer to, launched the ball higher, which as you can see, produced a steeper descent angle without a huge loss in spin. So pick the bones out of both sets of numbers. There is a case for both as to why each different thing happened, but essentially they both performed extremely well. The fact is whether or not it's the 10K or whether or not it is the 430 Max, these are very, very good drivers. There is no denying that. But my idea setting out today's video was to def really decide why am I paying extra money for the new version and how much difference is that? And I've got to say on the evidence that I found at least, it's not huge and it's not measurable. And it's not something that I noticed either in dry ball data nor out on the golf course and everything that separated the two was down to my own personal performance. As I've continued to say throughout this video, that is not a discredit to the 10K. It's very much the opposite. It's a credit to Ping and what they do in the forgiveness stakes. If you want a driver right now that is easy to play, does a lot of things in terms of the performance attributes that you would want as an average golfer, then you would now no doubt be looking at this 10K model. Whether you want to pay the extra money as opposed to the max, well, that's very much up to you. This is the latest and greatest. Arguably what Ping will be saying is that that 28 gram weight where it's positioned and other things they've changed in terms of perimeter weighting is gonna help produce a balance of high launch, low spin and no loss in terms of that forgiveness, that torque and twistness, in fact, an increase compared to the previous models. However, I say models. If we go back to the G425, you will see that they already pushed the boundaries of that 10K number. So it's surprising to me that nobody has picked up on this as yet, or at least not that I'm aware. I've heard glowing endorsements on every review, just how good the 10K model is. Yes, it is. but. I draw you back to the fact that I've made throughout this video, Ping already produce incredibly forgiving drivers. 
my question is just how much of a leap is it for them at least in that forgiveness stakes and what difference will it ultimately mean to you as an average golfer out on the fairway and of course the only person that can really decide that is you so i hope we give you all the information you need the truth about this model and others follow me subscribe hit that like button give me your feedback and what you're going to get is the truth from the average golfer and you're going to get to learn about how models differ and are they really a vast improvement to help you play better golf right thanks for watching see you all soon